Choosing the right tires for your car. Tire comparison, choosing the right tires for your car. We compare different tire types, low tire tread depths and incorrect tire pressures to see what different they make to winter safety. Tires are the only parts of your car in contact with the road, the only things keeping you on the tarmac and out of a hedge, making them crucial to your car's performance and safety. Cold, wet, or icy conditions can really make tires struggle, but plenty of motorists exacerbate the problem further by not putting enough thought into choosing the right tires. That's why we took an in-depth look at different tire types in different conditions to help you make the right choices where your car tires are concerned. Auto Express teamed up with Goodyear at the Myra test track to see just how much drivers can benefit from investing in a good quality set of tires, or at least keeping the set they currently own well maintained. To replicate the conditions of wintry British roads, we used Myra's one-mile wet handling track, as well as its brake testing facilities all covered by water sprinklers in constant action to put our two identical 1.5 C focuses and five sets of 205-55 R16 tires through their paces. We tested each set of tires objectively, using braking distances and lap times, as well as subjectively, on the amount of feedback and confidence they translated through the steering wheel and pedals. Our results should encourage you to double-check the condition of your tires, and think twice before just plumping for the cheapest set available next time you buy. Test 1, New Tire vs Part Worn Tire Around 40% of UK drivers don't know the minimum legal tread depth, 1.6 mm, so even fewer are aware of the performance consequences of low tread levels. On Myra's wet braking track, we lined up our two Fords with Goodyear's efficient grip performance tires. But one set was brand new, with 6 mm of tread, the other had just 1.6 to 2 mm of tread. The wet braking road mimics heavy rain, as it's under a constant spray of water from the dozen or so sprinklers around the straight. We accelerated to 55 miles per hour in each focus, and on reaching a marker, hit the brakes and measured the stopping distance. On the new tires, the car came to a halt in 39.6 meters, but that was 10.3 meters sooner on average than the worn set, or roughly two car lengths. More alarming was the feedback from the tires. With the worn set, the brakes instantly felt numb, the pedal felt solid, and only after 10 to 15 meters were we able to feel the tires find grip and slow the car. In contrast, the new set instantly bit into the surface, we could feel the rubber decelerating the car and there was no pedal numbness. Stuart Fain, Myra expert driving instructor, told us, that 10 meter delay comes from the worn tire not dispersing water quickly enough. The tire is essentially aquaplaning for a moment, which is why the brakes feel numb and the steering too light. The fact that the low tread depth disperses water less efficiently doesn't just mean a longer braking distance, but the initial lack of brake feedback means some drivers may lift off the brake pedal as they think something is wrong. This is where accidents can happen. Test 2, Premium Winter Tire vs Budget Winter Tire The basalt tiles on the braking circuit at Myra replicate the effects that snow has on tires, as they mimic its slippery, unpredictable nature, with a very low grip surface. Winter tires aren't just for snow, though, studies have shown they break and handle better than summer equivalents whenever the temperature falls below 7 degrees Celsius. Yet not all winter rubber is the same. To see just how much winter tires differ from one another, we equipped one of our Ford test cars with Goodyear's Ultra Grip Performance Gen 1 tires, while the second was fitted with a set of budget Wanli Snow Grip tires. The cars were accelerated to 52 miles per hour, and when we reached a marker, we braked hard and measured the stopping distances. The results were startling. On Goodyear tires, the car stopped in 94.4 meters on average, outbreaking its cheaper rival by over 40 per center, the Focus averaged 138.3 meters on the Wanli set or 44 meters more. Think how many cars, pedestrians, and other road users fit in the space of 44 meters, Stewart said. Unlike in the wet braking test, 
the tires provided similar feedback through the pedal and steering wheel. Each time we hit the brakes, the pedal was heavier than at the wet braking track, and the steering felt surprisingly light. Only with the Goodyear tires did we notice more steering feedback, but it wasn't substantially different from the Juan Lees. Stewart added, anyone can press the brake pedal hard, but no matter how good your reactions are, it's ultimately the tire that will determine how fast you come to a stop, and the 44 meter difference speaks for itself. This test proves that you get what you pay for with budget tires. Test 3, Correctly Inflated Tire vs Underinflated Tire Perhaps the easiest mistake for drivers to make is not to check whether their tires are correctly inflated. Yet according to our findings, this may just be the most costly mistake of all. We used a set of Goodyear Efficient Grip Performance tires around Myra's track, and after a handful of laps we took the pressures down to 1.8 PSI and headed out again. The differences were staggering. Whereas previously our focus test car felt poised and predictable through the corners, the underinflated tires hurled the hatchback around with little warning. On underinflated rubber, the car lapped the same 10 corner track 7 seconds slower, with an average time of 1 minute 29.3 seconds, but then lap times are only half the story. Nigel explained, you can just feel the tires bouncing around the rim. They provide that terrible, soggy feedback which translates to less feel through corners and makes everything unsafe. This proved to be the case in the emergency braking test we carried out around one of the corners the car took longer to stop than it had with the correctly inflated tires, and nearly ran into a ditch at the side of the track. We've worsened the transfer of energy through the brakes to the tires. They communicate terribly with the rest of the car now, Nigel told us. It was the right to left chicane that proved most challenging for the low pressure Goodyears, because the car almost leaped from one corner to the next. The lack of air in the tires turned the focus from a well balanced family hatch into a frightening bouncy castle. Test 4 Premium Summer Tire vs Budget Summer Tire The one mile Myra wet handling track is set up to replicate a typical British ORB road, with a long straight followed by a right hand chicane into a right hand hairpin. We tested a premium tire Goodyear's efficient grip performance against a set of budget Rockstone F109 tires. Neither was a specialist winter or all-season tire, so it's a good barometer of what many UK drivers will have fitted when out on the roads this winter. Up first was the Rockstone. The Myra layout proved too much for our focus as it began to slide from one corner to the next without any indication. We took on the corners as any normal driver would on a typical ORB road, not adjusting the steering angle mid-bend, but the F109S struggled to disperse water fast enough, and the front end unexpectedly lost grip. When the front snaps, most drivers would release the throttle and cause lift off over steer, further driving the car to the opposite lane, said Nigel. The budget tires fare just as poorly in the emergency braking test around one of the corners, and would have sent our Ford into a ditch had we kept the steering angle constant. This shouldn't happen, concluded Nigel. A good set of tires would have halted the car in its tracks. Conversely, the Goodyear proved more stable and predictable in all the corners the Rockstones had struggled with. Plus, the premium set delivered on the most crucial part of winter driving, confidence. We were able to tell exactly when the tire began to lose grip, and slow the car. This is how you can tell it's a far better tire, Nigel said. It provides so much more feedback, making you a more confident driver of course, for maximum confidence, a winter tire will provide even more reassurance. Tire comparison, our verdict. Numbers and measures usually decide tire tests, but our comparison tests here highlight that these numbers often determine the outcomes of the kind of situations drivers face every day. It's never a question of if a driver will have to make an emergency stop in their lifetime, it's a question of when. And on that day, other road users shouldn't have to second guess whether you have enough air or tread left in your tires. If our findings have made you think about changing the tires on your car, and switching to a new set of winter tires or all-season versions, 
we recommend having a look at the winners of our respective 2015 tests. Our pick of the best car tires on sale now. 2016 Winter Tire Test Winner, Continental Winter Contact TS860 Continental Winter Contact TS860 Such is the focused performance of the Continental Winter Contact TS860 that you could almost be justified in calling it an all-season tire. It will keep you safe on snow, and then it will excel in the wet and on dry roads exactly the conditions UK drivers will face for much of the winter. Price, £91.13 and pence for 225-55 R16 size from Black Circles. 2016 All-Season Tire Test Winner, Goodyear Vector 4 Seasons Gen 2. Goodyear Vector 4 Seasons Gen 2. As we saw in our last All-Season Tire Test, it takes a balanced performance across all our assessments to crown a winner, and that's what Goodyear has delivered here. There's no doubt this product is from the winter tire school of all-season design, but it does enough in the wet and dry tests to take the overall victory. Price, £113.94 for 205-45 R17 size from Black Circles.